Good morning and welcome to Live in a Greenhouse on YouTube. If you're new here, this channel is about my journey to design, build, and then live in the first greenhouse enclosed tiny home in the United States. Being the last weekend of the month, today is the September walk around. September was my second year living in the greenhouse and I'd planned to put out a second anniversary special, but there is so much video to review that it'll probably take me another week or two to get that done. In the meantime, fall has arrived and spring and fall have turned out to be my favorite time of year in the greenhouse. Daytime highs have been in the mid to upper 60s with overnight lows in the low to mid 40s. Inside the greenhouse continues to be about five to 10 degrees warmer even on cloudy days and I still leave the bedroom door open to the greenhouse overnight but it's time to start the long process of putting the garden to bed for the winter. So if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe so YouTube will show it to more viewers and come along today for the start of fall cleanup. Fall has arrived, but there are mostly evergreens around here, so not much leaf color. Talk to a backhoe operator about coming to move these rocks along the driveway to the edge of the drain field at his first opening. It'll be at least a few months for the permit to build the carport, and Matt isn't available anymore, so it looks like this tent will be here for a while. Tidied up in this area, but still a bit left to do. The drain field got its first mow of the year, now that the fawns are old enough to not bed down here. Wildflowers are still blooming, but I finally decided what I want to plant here, so October will probably start bringing in dirt to raise this area about 8 inches. One of the sunflowers was almost ripe when it fell over. I'm surprised the birds haven't picked at it. Not building the carport means we won't be pouring concrete this year either, so tidied it up a bit to get through the winter. Planted some iris bulbs and spread calendula seed here, so it'll be a bit more attractive next year. Didn't get to painting the deck this year. Where did the summer go? Get these carpets of mushrooms in the spring and the fall. Down here is where a lot of the action has been this month. I hired a carpenter to finish remodeling the cabin on the right into a tool and garden shed. It's now level with two more windows, a new steel door, and siding on the weathered north side. May need to wait till next spring to touch up the paint, but the interior should be done next week that I can start moving stuff in and have a workshop again. When the backhoe comes, he'll cut back this bank and stabilize it with rocks, but I decided to get a start on redoing these steps to get up and down the bank.
got about an inch and a half of rain last week, and even after watering well inside the greenhouse, there's about 2,800 gallons left. Check the traps after each big rain. Windows just starting to open means it's 70 degrees inside. And here's the mess that is the working garden. Leaves on the peach tree are starting to drop, and seeds are starting to drop from the volunteer black seed sunflower. Now that the rainy season is starting, I can start filling the pool again, and the lotus can go back into the pond, just in time to go dormant for the winter. Didn't get the screen done this month, but did get smart outlets for the air-to-ground fans and the pool pumps. Pool is down to about six inches now. I want to clean it before refilling, so still using pool water for the peach tree. Soon most of this stuff will move to the shed, and the gabby on basket will go back into the pool. Big news is September I finally got a cat, which I've wanted since I moved in. To help train her where she can dig, as I pull vegetables I'm laying chicken wire got a nice harvest of plum tomatoes and pulled those in September. The second seeding of bok choy is doing well. Almost time to start harvesting dill seed. I've never grown or even tasted kohlrabi and yesterday harvested the first one but I'm still deciding how to cook it. Planted lavage in two places. This location did best. Pulled the watermelon. And the carrots continue to produce well in three different locations. Time to harvest more beets. Almost time for leeks from this bed. These are a rainbow carrot mix in the middle, both the cherry tomato as a sunflower casualty. The gray striped sunflowers were my second favorite plant this year behind the peach tree. This time last month, the sunflowers were about 10 to 12 feet tall and were tied to a one by two, which was not strong enough. It snapped, and one morning I found all the sunflowers laying on the ground. Interesting what the inside of the stem looks like. I'll definitely try these again next year, but with sturdier support. Genevieve's basil that had been crowded out by the tomatoes. The cat has been scratching under the olive tree, so now there's chicken wire here too. Kalamondon is now about four feet tall. The fennel is still laying down and not sure any of the stems will get fat enough to eat, but I cook with fennel seed so I'm hoping to get some seed before it dies back. I planted leeks in two locations and these are the best. I'll probably pull a couple this week to make soup. Potting bench is still a mess with a lot of stuff that'll move to the tool shed. With the cooler temperatures and being able to water more frequently, the columbine, lavender, and primroses are perking up again, and the portulaca and godesia are blooming. Of course, the first plant of interest to the new kitty was the dianthus, 
which is toxic to cats, hence the cage. I planted white sage in two places, this one getting the most sun, and it did much better than the other. The bay laurel put on a few inches this year. I use some of this purple basil in cooking, but the leaves are sort of tough. Not sure if that's normal or due to the conditions here. Love these cone flowers that are now about six feet tall. I'll definitely plant these again next year, inside and outside the greenhouse. Pulled the rest of the borage, and the rosemary is happy about that. This fern was my sister's dying house plant that I divided and planted in two places early last year. But both halves have finally put out new leaves and look good. This crocosmia looks better also, but probably isn't getting enough sun in this location. I think this is Coreopsis. I like it. and going to let it go to seed. Thai basil, lemon balm, oregano, white sage, nasturtiums, lavender and parsley. Another pile that'll soon move to the tool shed. Trying the bench on this side. I think I like it. So frustrating looking at the empty ponds, but I hope the wait will soon be over. Got the screen attached. Now I need to add the trim. Almost time to switch over to the winter curtains, pillows, and sofa cover. About time to put away the ice maker, and the Instant Pot is already out for soup and stews. Finally painted the mirror frame using the same paint as the light fixtures. Time to clean the skylights. Switched over to the flannel sheets and winter cover this week. This orchid isn't as happy as the one in the shower. And brought the night blooming cereus inside for the winter. And there you have it. The rainy season may have started, but the doors and windows are still open throughout the day. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And come back next time for the second anniversary special.